Hey guys, I'm Jax. And I'm Victoria. And you're listening to Like Like Totally Totally Random. Random. Welcome to Like Totally Random from Home. (laughs) Hey guys. This is Jax and Victoria, and we just wanted to just see how you guys are doing, wanted to let you know how we're doing, um, wanted to lay out a few things of what our next couple of episodes will be looking like. Hopefully, everybody's doing well out there in rando land, and um, we want to keep bringing you our content. Obviously, everybody's going through a stressful time, so hopefully us being in your ear holes gives you some sort of relief if you're working from home with kids or with the stressors of your everyday life at home. Hopefully this gives you something. If you are an essential worker, hopefully you can pop your earbuds in and take some relief. If you are an essential worker, power to you. Much respect. Thank you for being out there and doing what you do. So Victoria, you're, I guess we're working from home now. Yeah, we're all working from home. Do you like it? Honestly, like, okay, first I want to say I feel super lucky that we're able to work from home. Oh my god, I know. That we're not just, like, sitting here not doing anything. For sure. Like, I, I feel hella lucky, to be honest. If I was in any of my other jobs, I would probably just not have a paycheck right now. Yeah. Or I'd probably still have to work, and that would be awful. Yeah, like, I definitely, for many reasons, don't miss being in hospitality, but it's, you know, the hospitality workers and... And those groceries and the hospitals, you know, those are people really keeping us alive right now. And I think that totally. it's – I couldn't imagine doing that right no, now. No, I'm so glad that they're doing it, but I could not – no. I don't think I could have handled it, honestly. No, me either. I don't – know. Just the unknown of – Yeah, just the, the, the risk, you know, because it really yeah, is a risk. It is. And, like, these people deserve at least hazard pay or something. Something. Like, I wonder yeah. how this is all going to play out at the end of it. I don't know. Hopefully this is, like, a catalyst for some kind of change or something, but yeah. I I don't know. <laughs> that would be the biggest and best silver lining of such a crazy, chaotic, terrible time. I mean, you it, it sucks to say, but sometimes it takes these huge, terrible things to make some positive changes. It's true. And I, I mean, I'm not going to hold my breath, honestly. I think just no. history has shown that, like, <laughs> you know. But I'm hoping that this leads to something good. Yeah, me too. We'll see. We'll see. But with all that said, I'm hashtag living my best life. This is my dream come true. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, I think this is my worst fucking nightmare. I literally have never been more grateful that I don't have children or a partner to deal with oh in god. my life. Oh my god. I feel truly blessed. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. <laughs> Dude, it's rough. Like I'm like, I don't know how you're handling it with your kid and your husband at home. Like <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. No, it's it's not good. Like I'm like you said, I'm I'm glad that we have this opportunity within our company to work from home and that they've been able to do this for us. We've been at home for about a week now and I think this was a little bit before some other people. So they really wanted to try yeah. to get on top of it before some other companies. So I, I appreciate it, but I never wanted to work from home to begin with. I like <laughs> the distinction of going to work and coming home. I do not like to mix both of my things. Like I don't even record <laughs> the podcast at home. Like I don't know why, but I don't like being at home really. Like I like doing things and it doesn't have to be, you know, going out and spending money, but I like being in nature and going for hikes. Like I just don't love being at home more than I kind of have to. I love to relax obviously, mm-hmm. but this is too much time. Like my <laughs> way too much time here. For all of you who don't know, um, I actually work so Victoria and I work together, but we also work with my husband. So mm-hmm. my husband is home and my toddler is home and I am <laughs> going fucking nuts. Like I don't, oh my God. I can't, I can't deal. And like, it's really hard because of course my kid is, you know, struggling herself. Like her life has changed a little bit and we still have to work. It's not like it can be like, okay, look, here, you know, play with her for yeah. five hours. You're not hanging out all day yeah, long. Yeah, I'm not watching movies. Like what I'm really doing is stressing out 
world about the work that I have to do, plus like trying to take care of my kid and like not get her to be on the fucking iPad all day. It's hard. That's ugh, that sounds so difficult. And like she's at the age where, you know, it's not like she has online school that she can do or anything like that. Yeah. Like she's little and yeah. what are you going to do? I can't even fucking imagine. I know. Like yesterday we kind of like set up a chart and was like, okay, here are the things we can do today. Like when we're, you know, <laughs> like when we're getting down to the bitter end of what we should do. And that was good. Like we had some direction, but then also That's like, good. well, like halfway through, yeah, we're so stupid. Like we kind of like timed it out. We were like, okay, at one o'clock we're going to do this. And at two o'clock and I'm like, what the fuck were we thinking? Like my kid doesn't, <laughs> my kid doesn't want to do anything, let alone do anything at a certain time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so like we were kind of a little bit more relaxed today we were kind of like here's things we can do you know and yeah so I think it's it's been rough but obviously I shouldn't even be complaining about it you know like I'm at home with my family we are able to like isolate ourselves and and try and kind of beat this and write it out and I shouldn't even be complaining about it I mean I think everybody's experience is valid like obviously for some people this is way harder but like you know it's a total life shift it's a total change to your everyday norm and like yeah. we literally don't know when it's gonna end so i think it's okay to feel a little a little claustrophobic if you will yeah a little changed <laughs> yeah i haven't even been outside i'm not gonna lie to you what? like <laughs> seven days oh my god victoria you really are living your best <laughs> life <laughs> I literally, I cleaned for like five days straight. I cannot tell you how many bags of random shit I took out of just my room alone. Nice. Like, this has been a luxury of time. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I think if you have more time to yourself, that working at home would be really a good place to be right now And in terms yeah. of just kind of like, because it's so crazy out in the world, like you'd be able to kind of organize your own space and feel a little bit less hectic with that organizing yeah, for sure no absolutely especially because i was like if i'm gonna be sending so much time here i need this to be like perfect uncluttered i can't i can't deal with like all the shit that was in here yeah yeah for sure did you so give, feel a lot better did you give anything away or um yeah i have multiple bags of stuff to give to the rescue mission but of course they're not doing pickups or anything yeah. like that right now mm-hmm which, I mean, I get it, but, like, it kind of sucks because I would like somebody to make use of it right now if they could. Yeah, but, for sure. You could always, yeah. like, post it on those Facebook sites, like the free sites, and see That's if true. anybody would grab it. Like, I do that all the time. I can't. We've got, you know, like, you go through things. You're like, nobody's going to buy this for, like, anything. Yeah. Just fucking come and totally. get it for free. Like, I give so much stuff away for free. It's And, and people take it. Like, I take free shit, too. Wow. Like, yeah, people take so many things. So maybe just huh. see if you put it That's up That's not a bad idea. Yeah, I'm going to see how long I can, like, stand to have that shit around. Around. Because I'd like, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to give it to, you know, the rescue mission or, like, some kind of charity. But, like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this all plays out. For sure. Definitely. Definitely living my dream. I <laughs> literally, the other day, I was like, this is exactly why I hoard craft supplies. <laughs> like, I don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> What are you, are you working on anything right now? Okay, so my biggest struggle right now during this quarantine pandemic is I feel like because I have so much time and I'm always wanting to be home because I always have all these projects in my mind, I feel like I need to like constantly be productive. Yeah. And I'm really struggling with not feeling that way. I'm, you know, I'm trying my hardest to be like, no, okay, you're off the clock. Like this is your time at home to relax. If you want to do something, do something because it's fun. Don't feel like you need to take advantage of this. Like you have to do it. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting here. I need to, like, make something or, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But with that said, I started weaving, like, a small little tapestry. I hate it so Ooh. far. So No, why? We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't – I didn't think the colors came through. I really was just, like, I need to start this and, like, panic started it. Oh, okay. I don't know where I'm going with it. <laughs> um, So that's kind of stressing me out and I kind of set it aside. What sort of, like, idea? I don't know. It's honestly looking like a baby – tapestry like for oh. a baby's room oh okay which doesn't make sense it, i started with like a soft yellow because i had a little bundle of it and i was like i just want to use this up use it yeah and then i have this like kind of uh, kind of like a unicorn looking yarn it's got like whites and like softer pinks and like light blue and yellow in it mm -hmm. and so i put that in there too so it's looking like a baby 
oh, kind of I thing. See. It's like yeah. too I'm not, soft or something. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it. We'll see what happens with it. I don't know. The nice thing is my mom decided she wants to try crocheting stuff. Nice. <laughs> so now you're going to teach her? It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> like she knows she knows how to crochet we just have very different crocheting styles oh okay she crochets american and i crochet english so it's hard for me to like help her sometimes i'm like what are you doing oh i didn't um, even know there was like different types oh oh yeah it's it's also weird because she knits the english way the rather heck? than the american way what i had no idea yeah so okay so crochet american way is hook on top like so for crochet it's like you're holding a pencil okay and then english way is hook under so it's like like almost holding mm-hmm. it in your fist I see. yeah and that's how i crochet because i feel like i can work a lot faster than holding it loosely at the end of my fingers if that makes sense interesting hmm. i learned something but yeah so it's been an adventure i'm pretty sure she ruined one of my balls of yarn already <laughs> because <laughs> She, like, did it and then undid it and she's done it, like, five times. (laughs) 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 Poor thing. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, Um, I mean, it's... (sighs) So it's an adjustment. It, it really is. It's it's a big adjustment. But one that is necessary, obviously. And like, do you find yourself so I'm honestly trying to be like, I'm not a panicker. And I really don't, you know, subscribe to like panicking as much as everybody else. I, I want this to be taken seriously. And I want to take it seriously. And but I I, up until like a couple of days ago, I really wasn't at the same level as some like other people. Mm-hmm. And like now I'm I'm there, you know, obviously it's been serious, but I just, you know, for the first time a couple of days ago, I'm like, okay, no, like, you know, people are totally isolating themselves. Like we're isolating. I have no intention to get anybody else sick. If I'm sick, like I wasn't fully on board. And then, you know, as the numbers started growing, I'm, I obviously wanted to take it more seriously than I was. Yeah. I like had a moment last night where I I couldn't sleep, which is not unusual for me. And it wasn't because of like stress or anything like that. That's just how I live my life. And I like, I started scrolling through Twitter and stuff like that. And I started to have an internal moment of panic. I usually have existential crises around like 2 a.m. anyway. (laughs) So, <laughs> so like that mixed with like being on Twitter, I was like, oh, M G, I was losing my shit. I was like, I just need to turn this off and like go to sleep. Like, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, you know, I, I don't allow myself to read that stuff or listen to that stuff because I will 100% get there. But I, I also know myself better than that. And I really don't want to get there because I will freak out and, and kind of let it like spiral out of control. So I, I really right. try and like keep it, you know, keep it together. <laughs> My husband's a bit of a panicker. So, you know, oh, I, I definitely want to be the more chill level headed yeah yeah totally i mean i'm like i don't know it and that was that's the only moment i've had thus far like in my mind yeah. i'm like dude i'm totally fine staying in my house forever like <laughs> i like i'm 100 percent fine with that i have no problem with it i'm not like climbing the walls or anything like that but it was just how real it was really started getting to me last night mostly because my brother is still working he's a bank teller yeah so he's in he's an essential employee so he's still working and obviously he's in the same household household as my dad and like i know he's being cautious i know he knows how serious it, it is but like the fact that it could be something so stupid and you don't even realize and it could you know, you could get sick or you could get somebody else sick. Like, that's devastating. And not only that, I'm seeing all these freaking people on social media not socially isolating. And, like, I cannot stand it. Like, I, I can't help but kind of wonder. Okay, did you see that, like, article about Miami or the people going on yeah, spring, uh, spring breakers? Jesus yeah. Christ. And then cut to all of them having coronavirus. Dude, at, at least five. Yeah. <laughs> Like, are you kidding, dude? I can't help but be like, suck it, bitch. Like, you literally asked for this. And like, yeah. And like, and I get it from like them being sick. But I'm like, how many people have they yeah, infected, exactly. you know, by being selfish like that? Yes. Exactly. And I'm, I'm never one to police other people. I'm like, I might feel internal disgust, but I'm never <laughs> one who's like, yo, cut that out. Like, that's not my business. People can live their lives however they want to live them as long as they're not hurting people. 
But like in this instance, you wanting to go hang out at your friend's house or whatever, you're hurting people. Yeah. Can you not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I, I don't really give a fuck what anybody does. Like I will definitely talk shit about you or whatever. But like totally. I'm never going to tell somebody really that I don't know, you know, that something is that they should or shouldn't be doing something like my good yeah. friends. A hundred percent. But like I don't really give totally. a fuck. If you want to like kill yourself, great with the coronavirus. But like. Like you said, infecting other people is really the issue here because you don't even know that you have it. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's just ridiculous. And like people don't get like this isolation doesn't mean like invite people over to your house. That's not that's not how this works. Right. <laughs> that's not isolation. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like just because you didn't leave the house doesn't mean you're socially isolating. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, I can't quite figure out that line of thinking and I mean like I totally understand the loneliness and you know the social literally the social isolation of it all but like and I wonder if it's people who are like younger you know people who really don't get it I don't know I don't know I feel like it's boomers (laughs) I feel like it's boomers like they're all like not taking it seriously I feel like my mom is taking it really seriously thank god and like she hasn't left the house and everything but like my dad low-key was like I don't want to wash my hands anymore blah blah and he was joking but like on the other hand like he wasn't joking (laughs) so (laughs) that like stresses me out and I just feel like it's especially you know because your dad has a exactly he's immune compromised yeah Yeah. so I'm like fuck dude can you not like this isn't a time to be joking like yeah ugh watching Ugh, dude i feel like i've watched it all <laughs> i feel like i i mean i felt like that before and then this happened and i'm like oh man you're like digging in the bitter depths of <laughs> literally i'm watching the most random shit right now have you okay everybody's talking about this have you seen that tiger documentary oh no okay like i haven't watched it but like dude are you there like is that where you are with (laughs) that's where i've gotten let me go through my list of shit that i watched so i can i can tell you how bad it's gotten here and yet i still haven't fucking finished the witcher (laughs) god damn it victoria (laughs) it's because i'm with my mom the whole time i can't just like be like bye mom i'm gonna go watch a show by myself for an hour you know yeah for sure (laughs) okay before i get into the tiger thing let me get into this and i wanted to see it it's called like Aries or something like that. A R E S. Yeah. So that show was on my list for a while. And I have a bunch of things on my list. And I'm like, oh, yeah, eventually I'll watch that. And when it comes to it, I'm like, I don't feel like watching any of this. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so I had that on my list for a while. And it basically was, it was good. The ending really annoyed me because it was. Like, you could tell they did it like an open-ended, kind of suspenseful, like, oh. draw a conclusion that you will. But right. there was no clear, like, line of thinking for you to draw a conclusion. Oh. It was still really good because it was a – it's basically like this cult. So it's like a fraternity slash sorority. It's like a co-ed thing. But it's basically like a cult. And this girl accidentally joins and then she's in and, like – All of this crazy shit happens. And there's, like, not paranormal. Is that the right word? I guess. I guess there's, like, some paranormal stuff. Not, like, ghost stuff, but, like, otherworldly kind of stuff. Okay. Like, beings and creatures and things like that. It's fucking weird. I think it's worth watching just to see it. Okay. I'd probably give it, like, three out of five Tamagotchis. Yay, Tamagotchi. Yeah, I mean, I think it's worth a watch. It's really interestingly shot. It's some kind of European. Oh. I don't want to say it's like Dutch. It's gotten to the point where Netflix literally has a, can- a category and it's like Scandinavian international television shows for me. <laughs> and you're like, yes. I'm like, fuck it up. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Scandinavian procedurals are probably the best. What does that even mean, procedurals? <laughs> like somebody gets murdered and cops have to like figure out what's going oh. on. Oh. Yeah, it's. Right, like dark. Uh, kind of. Are the, is that not Scandinavian or is that German? That's German. Yeah. I was just talking about that the other day. I was like, I need Dark to come back right now. <laughs> 
I love how like some of the big companies are trying to push out things that they were holding off on. I think that's pretty great. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Except for charging $20 to rent a movie that you could have seen in theaters is kind of a lot. It's like highway fucking robbery. That's price gouging. What the I fuck? agree. I mean, I kind of get it because they're probably like, okay, at a theater, you would each pay what, like 11 to $15? True, true. And we would get that revenue if you're renting it. Like three people could be watching. Like I I kind of get it, but like, oh. Yeah, I get it as well. It's just like, right now, really? Right now? Yeah, like, can you please, like, give me a 50% off coupon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up for the emails. <laughs> So speaking of, I finally watched and finished in a couple of days, October Faction. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I will straight out say that I'll give this three out of five Tamagotchis. Okay. I liked it, mm -hmm. but there was definitely, I think you mentioned this in the previous episode when you said you watched it, that there's definitely some plot, cheesy plot points yeah. and stuff like that, which are 100% yes. Mm -hmm. But the connection between some of like the actors in this I thought was great. I saw that plot twist coming for sure. Yeah. And I really loved that main um, woman's acting and I loved the two twins or the twins I thought they were great I found her um, annoying to be honest the female twin so did I Ugh. I liked their connection but sh I hated her I don't like her in this I at think all. she's so annoying I like her weird nerdy friend who's like weirdly psychic me too yeah liked her um, I liked the male twin. Me too. I thought his romantic plot line was a little too forced. Too which soon. I think was, yeah, part of that cheese factor. Like, how do you go from zero to, like, let's basically get married. In one day. Like, <laughs> literally in yeah. a couple of hours. Like, how do you no. go from, like, I know you're gay, like, oh, I just figured this out, to, like, oh, my God, let's be together and let's go tell everybody. Yeah. Like, Let, go tell your parents. It, like, come out to your parents. That's not scary at all. Yeah, go tell your parents everything. Yeah. It was too fucking much. I kind of wished that they focused more on, like, the monster hunting aspect. Like, I thought that was really funny at the beginning when they run into the vampires at the store. Uh, yeah, that's true. I thought that was pretty funny. But I like how they kind of – this is a bit of a spoiler – but mm -hmm. I like how they kind of subvert the plot. Me and too. Like, you know, that I found was really interesting. I thought that was like a really interesting social commentary. I loved that. I, I think that if they wouldn't have done that at the end of the season, I think I would have been like, eh, I could take yeah, this or leave it. A hundred percent. I'm glad that they made that change within the plot because I just wonder what season two is going to be about. I don't know. Is there even going to be a season two? Yeah, is there going to be a season two for anything at this point? They postponed filming for Stranger Things and I'm devastated. I know. This What's is going to ruin on? my hypothesis that it's coming out on Christmas <laughs> 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 and or Thanksgiving. I wonder how quickly they could like turn that around if... I don't know. You know, like, because I mean, essentially, like, we're not getting vaccines for, for another year and a half. Like, yeah, what is going to happen with our lives then? I don't know. I can't live without Stranger Things and Netflix. I know. Oh, my God. I miss it so much. <laughs> I'm really like, I want to watch Stranger Things again. <laughs> <laughs> I might get to it, man. If I watch everything on Netflix, that'll that'll be on my list for sure. <laughs> I re-watched The Umbrella Academy again. Oh, I want to do that. It's pretty good. It's such an easy watch. It really, I mean, I've, especially after you watch it the first time and you're not like, what's the plot twist? What's going to happen? Yeah, exactly. You can just like sit back and it really can be kind of like background noise. There's so many funny parts, uh, but that you don't ne necessarily need to like totally remember. Like totally. You know what I really, really want to watch? And I feel like this is something I'm gonna have to watch by myself. It's this new show that just came out called Feel Good. Okay. Have you seen that? Like no. the, the trailer. So it's got one of my favorite comedians. I don't know if I love her her because well she's really funny i think she's like canadian or something she's super funny but i also love her in the way that i love kristen stewart so that's probably like clouding my judgment here <laughs> um but so basically what it is is i think it's like semi-autobiographical so she's a comedian like all that kind of thing and at least from the trailer there's a girl who keeps showing up to her show 
obviously they connect. So I think it's like the evolution of their relationship and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know what you mean. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have seen this trailer. She's a comedian. Like, she's an actual stand-up Yeah, comedian. she's a real comedian. And her stand-up is yeah. so fucking funny. So funny. When I saw that she actually had a show coming out, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, she's weird. I love it, though. Like... <laughs> She's strange. She's a strange character. I love her. Her accent is super weird. I don't get it. Yeah, me either. I think she must have like... Is she from like French Canada or something? Like why does she talk like that? I think so, but I think maybe one of her parents might be from a different country and have like a strange accent. Maybe. Because she she speaks like weird for a Canadian, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's... Yeah, it's pretty strange. One of her stand-up stand up shows, I guess, is about how she started dating guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. I was like, unsubscribe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, for real, but, like, though. I was like, ma'am, no, please. I Why know. would you do that to yourself? I think she was like with that, like that one particular guy for like three years. But like, wasn't that I think this was all in the same stand up show. <laughs> yeah. Stand up show. Yeah, sure. I don't know. <laughs> Where she was, like, really addicted to coke. Yeah. So I, I think, like, he was a dealer as well, and I think that she kind of was, you know trying to take advantage. But this is also the one where she talks about that shrimp in her head. Did you do you remember? No. That? No. I feel like this is a different one. Oh, I feel okay. like that's a different one than the one I watched because this was her like starting to date guys possibly again. So I oh. think this might have been later. I'm going to go oh. back and watch whatever one you're you're talking about because I'm obsessed with her. I'll try and find it. Um yeah. And she was like, "You don't know how weird it is to date guys when you look like this." And I was like, <laughs> "Uh <laughs> I was like, if given any other option, why would you do that? I know. That's a really good question. (laughs) Inquiring minds want to know. I I, I truly just cannot like see that for her. I wonder. No. I wonder if she like goes into that at all in the show. I don't know. I am curious. I, I know that they talk about like her addiction and stuff like that in the show, at least from the trailer that I watched, like literally one trailer. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping to watch more of that. I'm probably gonna have to watch it alone because there's no way I'm gonna watch that with my mom. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> your mom could handle that. I don't, I think that'd be such an awkward setting. That'd be so awkward. I mean, it's Netflix, you know, there's gonna be a, like at least five graphic sex scenes and like, I can't do that. I can't. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I'm gonna be like, mom, look away! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, so... I'm on season three of The Good Place. Didn't you say that you were watching that? Hell yeah. I fucking love The Good Place. I have to watch the last season. That's where I'm at. I think season four is the last one. Okay, so I'm almost there. I fucking love The Good Place. Like, the end of... So so good. good. I fucking love Kristen Bell so much. Like... Me too. She's my spirit animal, I'm pretty sure. I... If I was whiter. I feel like Dax Shepard is my spirit animal. (laughs) (laughs) I had just finished the episode with Dax in it. <laughs> I love it. What does he say to her? Like, smash you later or something? Yeah. And she's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says something like, oh, you're hot. She's like, oh, you're not too bad yourself. And I was like, oh, <laughs> So <funny>. good. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love that. Like, if you guys haven't started The Good Place yet, I think it's a highly underrated show. There's something kind of amazing about it. And it really kind of takes a turn in a few different places. And I feel like really enhances a lot of the actors, you know, abilities. And yeah, I think they... They work. Everybody works really well together. It's great. Uh, yeah, I I agree. And like, I feel like they so easily could have taken it to a place that was redundant or like not an interesting plot. Oh, for sure. They consistently find ways to like revive it and like go in totally different directions. And I think that they do that really well. And it's like, you know, a feel good show. Like in trying times like now, you don't need to watch like, I don't know, something really dry and like, yeah. you know, just fun, fluffy shit. And that's yeah. totally it. I totally agree. Like, it doesn't have to be these totally, you know, in-depth shows. And like you said, it it really kind of kept me on the edge of my seat in terms of, like, not getting boring. Right. It took a lot of different turns. And, yeah, it was was good. I like it. it. So, I guess one more season until I'm finished with that one. Yeah. I'm not emotionally ready for the last season. (laughs) I feel like I'm going to be devastated. Same with Schitt's Creek. Like, I can't do it. I need to wait till this is over until I do it. I can't emotionally wreck myself (laughs) like that. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, dude. Seriously. And actually, I don't think it's going to be on Netflix for a while anyways. No, but I think it's on Hulu. Oh, is it? I think so. No. I can't do it. I can't do oh, it. Oh, shit. I might have to. Damn it. I kind of just like... I'm scared. I- I'm actually the opposite. Sometimes I'm like, okay, let's just get this over with. Because otherwise... No! <laughs> otherwise, I'm just going to like put it off forever. And then I'm going to like never watch it for two years because I'm not emotionally ready. <laughs> yeah, that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> until i'm i'm in the the right mind frame to do it <laughs> have you watched anything that you wouldn't suggest over this isolation period well okay i watched fuck what is that movie called it's not containment it's not pandemic oh it's outbreak outbreak yeah okay so i really like this movie <laughs> You and literally every single person on this Dude, fucking it's like, planet right it's now. Totally That's why trending. It's totally trending. I honestly like I fucking love love apocalypse movies, which is so ironic for me to be living through this. <laughs> um anything like a viral outbreak or like zombies oh, or yeah. anything like that is my jam. Hook it to my veins. <laughs> um so I like I kind of watched it to like test myself to see if I would be like, oh my god. Freaking out no. about it. It was fucking excellent. It's been so long since I saw it. It was really good. I love how there's a really young Dempsey in it. That's right. Dude, he looks so good in that. So good. Like, not doctor at all. Beautiful curls and, like, the Uh punk rock vibe. Ugh, living for it. I know. I re- like a couple of years ago, no, maybe like six years ago, I watched it or something and I was like, mm-hmm. oh shit, what's up? Because of yeah. course he's like attractive in Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy sucks. But like him just being young. Oh, yeah. Th- the hair is what sold it to me. Yeah. Wasn't he in one of those? I don't know if it was actually a John Hughes movie. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. What was it called? Weird Science, I think. No, 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 no. Not Weird Science. That one's got, Fuck. um, what's his name with the three names that was in. Oh, yeah. 16 Candles. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go in there. What is his again. name? I can't remember his name. Whatever. No, not Weird Science. It was um where he's like the nerd. Oh, it's the one it's about the... the money. It's Love Don't Cost a Thing or something like that. Is it that or is that the yeah. Nick Cannon one? <laughs> no, no. That's the same thing. He was in the first one and Nick Cannon was in the second one. <laughs> he was in the second one. <laughs> I fucking did. I just remember he was like riding on a tractor or like a lawnmower or oh something. God, yes. Anyways, yeah, I'm he pretty was sure. Cute in that too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was like the height of his attractiveness. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, like he definitely is cute as an older man for sure. But I don't know. There's something about fucking Grey's Anatomy that I just can't. Like, I watched Grey's Anatomy for a couple of years, just like everybody oh else. But like... not me. For the <sighs> record, not me. Read it again, Judge. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have believed. <laughs> It was almost like Lost. Ugh. Took too much too many years out of my fucking life. Yeah, I gave up after like a season of Lost, I think. I should have. I saw a tweet the other day that said, no matter how long this pandemic goes, I'm not watching a single episode of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Hundred. I was like, I feel that. <laughs> I feel that in my bones. So this deal breaker is from our dear, dear, beloved Ozine at What's in Ozine. <laughs> this one's really specific and weird. Like, I feel like something happened to her that <laughs> okay. this came up. Um, so she asks, is it a deal breaker if someone uses the same spoon to eat as the one that they use for their dog or cat food? What the fuck? <laughs> Um, I think something happened to her. Yeah, I think she had some kind of experience. There's some sort of experience there. Like, I can imagine the experience was in the middle of the night. She got up. She wanted a snack. She decided she wanted some ice cream from the freezer. She saw a a random spoon just lying. (laughs) Just lying on the counter. She goes, takes a scoop of her ice cream, puts it in her mouth, and surprise, it's also cat food. Uh. (laughs) Oh my god, I hope to god that was not the case. I can see it in my mind's eye, Of course you can. There is no other instance in this world that that question needs to be asked. The the only other thing I can think of is like, okay, you're you're on a date, right? And you're at this guy's house and he made you dinner and it was so good. And you ate it predominantly with a spoon. (laughs) So dinner's over. You're really polite. You take the dishes over to the kitchen. He's like, hey, hold on. I have to feed my cat real quick. He grabs a normal spoon. (laughs) <laughs> and then puts it in the cat food, and you have the memory of this divine meal you had <laughs> being contaminated with cat food. 
That's the only other thing I can think of. I think these are both very specific instances that probably happened. I'm curious. I want her to follow up Same. and tell us Same. what prompted this. Same. What's an Azeen? What happened to you? Are you okay? There's a hotline for this. 1-800-HOT-MESS. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for reals, like, from my own perspective, mm-hmm. I, I don't have a problem with it. Also, I don't use spoons to dish out my cat's food. Well, does your cat eat wet food? No. Oh, that's why. Yeah. yeah. But I guess I probably would have a specific spoon for it, but I don't think I'd be like, oh no. Like, I just I use be like, a regular spoon. Yeah. Like, I think I'd be like, whatever. Like, it gets washed anyway. Yeah. I think, I think in my mind, I'm like, okay, it gets washed anyways. But on the other side, I'm like, ew. You know, like how, cause my cat does eat wet food. She's a picky little bitch, but she has her own little spoon and it's pink and it's shaped like a little kitty and it has ears. Aww. So that's the spoon I use to feed her. And like, same thing with my dog. Like he had his own spoon. It was like white and like lame, but. They had their own fucking thing. Like, I can't imagine waking up in the morning and I have the spoon in the sink and I clean the spoon and then I use it to, like, stir my coffee. I mean, I guess that's a good point. Like, I've always had their own specific – so they have – even though it's dry food now, Mm -hmm. they have their own, like – Like, scoop scoops. Yeah. Yeah. That I would never eat off of. Right. So in reverse – I guess you're right. But is it a deal breaker? Like, if you saw, if you walked in to your house and your husband just fed the cat wet food and then cleaned the spoon and then used it to eat something else, would you turn around and leave or would you be like, whatever? He cleaned his spoon. Good job. (laughs) (laughs) Good job today, babe. From me, that's 100% not a deal breaker. Okay. Um, I'd look at him and be like, really, though? There's, like, other spoons 500 there. other spoons. Yeah, like, literally. But okay, whatever you want to do. Because the only thing I can think of is how well are you cleaning this fucking spoon? <laughs> you know? That's the only thing I can think of. I don't know. Okay. I'm on the fence with this one. So I feel like I have to say it is a deal breaker. You know, if I can't 100% say I'm fine with this, it's a deal breaker. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think you would be thinking about it. 100%. If it happened to you in real life, you'd be like, what the fuck? But it also would be like somebody else doing this. And that's like specifically what her deal breaker was. So if somebody else does it, like I can't trust how well they're cleaning it. You know, that would freak me out. That's a deal breaker. Right. True that. Thanks, Azine. Please follow up with your question. (laughs) Let us know what happened. We care for you. (laughs) So, guys, let us know what you want to hear from us during this quarantine. We know these are trying times and we want to do our best to support you and bring you guys, you know, fun, uplifting things so you don't have to worry about the uh, global panic that we're all living under. So let us know if you need more memes on your feed or if you want to hear us talk about a specific topic or watch a movie and give you our opinions on it. So reach out to us on our Instagram at like totally random or feel free to email us at like totally random pod at gmail.com. Thanks, guys.